quick. So I'm going to, I'm going to just get, we'll just get started. So, so uh, yeah. Chris, you know, how did you get into sales? Yeah. So uh, very interesting senior year, uh, last semester of college, knowing where I wanted to go as far as PA school and being a health major need to make extra cash and got into uh, my girlfriend at the time, her brother was a manager, sales manager, got me into a fronter role. And uh, here I am six, seven years later, <laughs> uh, founder of a company, uh, huge training experience, huge sales experience. It's uh, I was blessed to work with C-level executives my first couple of years to where they just threw me in the trenches and got to be in the meetings every day, the daily game plans. And after a while, you just soak everything in and it, it's just... Um, it's my passion. It's um, so I was in sales for six years, and then okay. I was a sales rep for two of those six years, and then I was a sales training manager, and then a sales training director. So total of six years, and it uh, feels like thirty because uh, that's just how it is sometimes. Those long grinds. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So and then uh, afterwards, uh, at the end of the year. For faith, I had a rave with no to not do much more. I found a dish of your brand. You're definitely on your way. And and the name, so dominant sales training. How did like where did DST come from? So, like, where's dominant sales training was something that I needed something powerful. And to be honest with you, I always had these meetings uh, at my previous company where he said, you don't want to be good. Uh, you want to dominate. Yeah. Because if you, if you just want to be good and you compare yourself to other people, then you're only setting yourself for a certain standard. But when you dominate, everyone else wants to compare to you and everyone wants to try to be like you. So my theory and, and what my company kind of stands proud on is we create and develop successful sales professionals. But it's important to know instead of being great in sales, you should be dominant. Yeah. And that's so, something that's something kind of what we stand by. So 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 now that Super Bowl's coming up, you want to be the Tom Brady of sales. You want to be the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, would, that would be incredible. <laughs> hey, Grant Cardone, he's a friend of mine. And yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I kinda wanna be like Cardone when when I'm his age. So I got like twenty five years or something. Yeah, so yeah, he's, I got he's, he's all over social media, that that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, same. Uh, what raw skills are, are, or attributes do you think are the most important to salespeople? Great question. Uh, one, I would say conviction, right? Okay. Uh, if you don't believe in your product, you're not going to be able to sell it, hands yeah. down. And you believing in your product will help you possess the conviction that you need in order for your potential client to yeah. feel that conviction, right? So the, the, I have this saying where passion plus conviction equals rock star lifestyle. Yeah. And when you're passionate for your job, you have conviction, you will be successful. Yeah. Um, another thing I believe is identifying the personality and connecting with, with who you're speaking with in regards to inside sales or outside sales. If you don't have active listening skills and you can't connect and understand who you're communicating with, there will be uh, resistance. There will not be uh, a connection to where majority of the time there will be a lot left on the table. And I think another thing that I strongly believe in uh, as far as raw skill sets is clearly you have to close, you have to you know, overcome objections. But I think resiliency um, in sales is huge because one, we get no's a lot. Yeah. And I think it's all about how we respond and react to someone saying no. And I think that also ties in with emotional intelligence. It's being stable, understanding resiliency, and just you keep pushing, you keep grinding. Yeah. And everything will come into play. And I, and I think that's what's most important, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. A few things, actually, I still, I always tell my, my sales team, getting a no is not a bad thing. Because getting a no means you're that much closer to getting a yes. Um, so right. don't get so mad. Thing. No, everyone gets, you know, we got rejected. But you, can, you can go ask 10 girls on a date. Nine are going to reject you. You get the 10th one. You're, you're not single anymore, <laughs> right? You have 10 sales people. You have 10 demos. You close one. You made as much money as you might have closed, you know, taking all nine demos. So it's... Uh, it's you know what's great is when you get a no, when you get a credit card decline, when you get someone that bails on an appointment, this is what I look at it as. If that comes, it's an added bonus, yeah. right? You brought that opportunity to the table. And if that opportunity ends up closing at some point, you'll look back and say, oh man, that was great. 
Yeah. That, that was amazing. So yeah. never be upset by a no, never be upset by a decline or, or a canceled appointment because you put in the work and if that work pays off, great. But here's one thing that a sales rep should never do is focus on one person. Of course. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You will run yourself sick. You will drive yourself crazy and you will prevent yourself from closing more deals and hurting yourself and creating this horrible process of being a robot and just going through the motions. So very, got to be self-aware when it comes to that. Yeah. One more thing, you know, when you mentioned personality, one thing that I, I've noticed, in, especially in my day in sales is treating introverts and extroverts very differently on the phone or by email. The way I would email somebody that might be a CIO, CTO, or, or tech person is very different than I might email, you know, an entrepreneur salesperson, even on the phone, right. it would be very different um, on, on how I would, I would present that, especially with personality. Um, my last question for you would be, what would you recommend to companies in training or looking to start training? Uh, what I would say is understand who you're training, understand your sales reps, understand that you need to have a personal relationship with each one. Every sales rep is not the same. So in hindsight, you can have group trainings, but it's also important to communicate and train each individual rep individually because everyone learns differently. Everyone communicates differently. Yep. And also having that personable approach will make the sales rep feel comfortable, will make them feel like you're really having a vested interest in their success. And that's one thing I tell every sales company and every sales manager, have a vested interest in your reps. Don't train just to train. Also, product knowledge is not how you train. Product knowledge will be learned, especially over time, getting on the phone and hammering it out. Through experience. Through experience, product knowledge will come. You need to have individuals that know how to sell, but know who they are first. If they don't know their potential, they're not gonna be able to reach the potential that you're looking for them to reach. So that's, that's, that's what I would say. Um, you, I, I really want to know your story and how you got into sales. Okay, so uh, funny enough, um, I grew up as a, I'd say a semi-professional tennis player with a world ranking. Um, played, what? I played. I had a professional ranking. Uh, I used to train with. Actually, I coached um, uh, some of Canada's best. And then what I did was I uh, I went to do my MBA, and my mom said you can either go the education route or you can go to be a professional tennis player. And what I did, I did, did the MBA route. Was in finance was on the elevator my first day and everyone was just straight faced, no time, like I have to get into sales. So what I did was I uh, moved away from my MBA in finance, got into sales, worked as VP of sales, came up with, came up with an idea, made my first $49 sales with my other business. And then uh, now we're five years later, a year and a half into auto close and uh, continuing to grow it. So it's been, a, it's been a wild ride, but a fun ride. That's it. So, so you're like the Canadian Andre Agassi. He was my favorite, but actually, you know what? I had the whole uh, outfit. I had the, the short shorts, I had the tight shorts, I had the, yeah, I, I didn't have the hair though. Awesome. Everything but the hair I had. Hey, uh, and, you know, that's awesome because uh, seeing auto clothes over these last couple of months and understanding kind of what you guys do really helps me understand how you could be effective to a lot of companies out there. And I'm just curious, so my next question is, what is auto clothes secret sauce? So the secret sauce is our business to business database inside the platform. Cause there's a lot of different automation companies. There's a lot of data companies, but we've done is we've put the automation and the database all in one. Therefore, if you are a salesperson, marketing person, entrepreneur, and you want to prospect to um, a thousand vice presidents of sales in Missouri, you can actually schedule your sequence, go in, search through our database and within seconds, um, ideally prospect the people all over the United States. So it's kind of putting everything together in one. And obviously salespeople want to save time and make more money. So we save them hours a week in, in prospecting. And, that, and that's huge, especially when it comes day to day in sales yeah. and having the ability to save time, being able to focus on other areas uh, exactly. within the company, that's huge. And yeah. so that's something where a lot of people should be aware and really understand how much time are they wasting? Uh, cause I, in, in my opinion, I know a lot of companies that focus on all these tedious things and don't have automation and it is preventing them from seeking higher highs and being able to grow the company. Exactly. So I love that. What are some of the best case practices behind sales automation? So the key with sales automation is salespeople think that you can email somebody once and if they don't reply, they're not interested. 
but actually most sales happen on the fifth or seventh follow-up with that yep. prospect. So I would say nowadays salespeople are just lazy. If you're going to send one email and expect a reply from a CIO, CTO, or VP of sales, they're getting 150 of those. So you have to continue to email and, and, and put that all in the same thread and follow up with that prospect. I would also say subject lines, I'm keeping them short and simple because most people nowadays read everything on mobile. So if you're sending Absolutely. anything more than two, three words, they're not even seeing what you're writing. Um, and also right. in the body paragraph, I would say is your call to action. Make sure within that first three to four seconds, you tell that prospect what you do, what you can help them with, what their challenges are, and how you're going to help them solve them. Because if you don't, they're not going to read down the email. They're going to read that first sentence and, and decide, yes, I want to read this email or no, I don't. Exactly. Exactly. The, the power of engagement and the power of uh, enticing or having someone be intrigued to go ahead and follow through the entire thing is what's key. Of course. And, yeah. and, and it's huge. Uh, my last question is, what would you recommend to millennials getting started in sales? So a few things. One, social selling. Um, social selling become huge. That means engage with people on LinkedIn, um, engage on Instagram, engage on Twitter, engage on everything. Because nowadays, your personal brand is your company brand. So if you're not working Absolutely. on your personal brand, you're not going to help your company. Um, and the second thing is video emails. Um, I think this year, next year, you're going to see a lot more people are going to be sending videos as emails because nowadays everyone sends text emails. But if you stand out and you send a video email with uh, you know, a, a personal introduction to somebody, um, you'll get a way higher conversion. And do, do we call that a V-mail? <laughs> a V-mail, there we go. Yeah, well, I, 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 I never one before. <laughs> That's good. I might, have, I might have to check that out. Yeah. You, better, uh, you, better tra you better trademark that before I do. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's awesome, man. And yeah, you're right. I, I could definitely see uh, video interaction and social uh, taking over the next five to 10 years uh, as far as engagement and someone as far as the visual of what they're wanting to see. Instead of reading a text, it's more powerful to get that visual uh, moving forward, especially how kind of we're evolving, uh, not only as a country, but as a generation. Perfect. My last thing for you is how can people get in touch with you, Chris, if they want to learn more about um, your dominant sales training? Yeah, uh, you can contact me in a variety of ways. Uh, C Randone at dominant sales training.com. You can go to dominant sales training.com. Find me on LinkedIn, Chris Randone and uh, Instagram, Chris Randone too. So yeah, I mean, a variety of different ways. How about you? Uh, with us, you can go you know, autoclose.com. Um, you can try out autoclose with a free trial on the website. You can email me at sean at autoclose.com and that's sean the proper way, S-H-A-W-N at autoclose.com. You can catch me on Instagram. I don't have as many followers as Chris, but uh, <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> by default, by default, man. Listen, it was a pleasure and I uh, had a great time, man. I appreciate you uh, letting me uh, come inside and talk to the team today, man. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, you can stay warm and I'll stay cold here in Toronto. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Take care, man. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Oh,